eternal God. In the cross of Jesus, we see the cost of our sin and the depth of your love. In humble hope and fear, may we place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to redeem the world, to save us from our sins. As we come to him, we confess that we have failed him as his disciples. We ask him for his mercy and help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy upon us. Bring us back to you as those who were once dead, but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance, beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account." Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by the Lord and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. 
all we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing our first hymn, O sacred head surrounded.
The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and handed him and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, 
and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the passion of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The sermon is preached by Douglas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? That was the day they killed the Son of God on the squat hilltop by Jerusalem. I was a stranger, could not read these people or this outlandish deity. Did a God indeed in dying cost my life that day by chance, he on his road, and I on mine? Why? I find Good Friday a disturbing day. In the days before the secularization of Easter, to be out and about on Good Friday felt odd. The world was different on this solemn day. To gain some insight into the raison d'etre of Good Friday, we have to look back at the Judaic concept of sacrifice offered in reparation for sin because Christianity interprets the death of Jesus in a very Judaic fashion. Before the destruction of the temple in AD 70, and therefore in Jesus' lifetime, one of the central features of Jewish worship, namely sacrifice for sin, 
was typified by the temple cult of animal sacrifices to appease God. It may seem grim and even primitive to us in the 21st century, but we do have to read scripture as a product of the time in which it was composed. That applies, to my mind, to the whole Bible. You will recall that in the book of Genesis, Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son, and in obedience to God, prepared an altar. God intervened before the fatal moment and provided a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. Mary and Joseph presented an offering of two turtle doves or young pigeons as they brought Jesus to the temple for what we now know as a feast of Candlemas. Sacrifice is thus inherent in the events of Good Friday. What better sacrifice could be offered, thought the Church Fathers, than a god? Who could take the sin of the world on his back and metaphorically go into the wilderness carrying the sin like the scapegoat of Yom Kippur when the Son of God? This brings us back again and again and again to the fundamental doctrine of Christianity, namely that Jesus Christ is both God and man. Jesus Christ, the metaphorical Lamb of God, represents the ultimate sacrificial lamb to take away the sins of the world, fulfilling the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. If one reads the Gospel accounts of the Passion of Christ, and particularly his behaviour before Pontius Pilate, one might think that if Jesus had played his cards rather more carefully, he might have been spared his gruesome fate. Before Pilate, Jesus behaved rather like a petulant teenager before the headmaster, in giving very abstruse answers to his questioner. Pilate, to his credit, found Jesus innocent. Indeed, some of the Coptic churches consider Pilate to be a saint. It was the Jewish leaders who were ultimately responsible for the crucifixion. Jesus was condemned because he claimed to be the Son of God, the King of the Jews. Blasphemy to the Jews. Religions are not necessarily either understanding or compassionate. Look at the partition of India in 1948. The bitterness in Ireland, as we remember on this day, the Good Friday Agreement, signed 23 years ago, and of course the Middle East in our own time. But again, another mystery. Was it not the mocking priests who cried, he saved others, he cannot save himself? After all, this was the man who healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and raised Lazarus from the dead. One can understand their conundrum. Good Friday provides me with more questions than answers to this deep central mystery of the Christian faith. And I leave you with a simple question. Why? As we think upon our Lord's passion and death for us, members of the choir sing Pergolesi's Stabat Mater Dolorosa. <laughs>
God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore we pray to our Heavenly Father for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Church of God throughout the world, for unity in faith, in witness, and in service, for bishops and other ministers and those whom they serve, for Andrew, our bishop, Joe, the suffragan bishop of Dorking, and all the people of this diocese, for our parishes of East and West Clandon, and for those <clears throat> who are mocked and persecuted for their faith. That God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray for all those preparing to be baptised this Easter that Almighty God may open the eyes of their hearts and open wide the gates of his mercy, that receiving forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of baptism, they may be one with Christ our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, you make your church fruitful with new daughters and sons, Increase your gifts of faith, hope, and love in all those preparing for baptism, that through the font of rebirth they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders. For Elizabeth, our Queen, and the parliaments of this land, for those who serve in public office, for all those who strive for justice and reconciliation, that by God's help the world may live in peace and freedom. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will is our peace, turn our hearts and the hearts of all people to yourself, that by the power of your Spirit the peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's ancient people, the Jews, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christians and Jews, for the removal of our blindness and bitterness of heart, for forgiveness for our part in the persecution of the Jewish people. That God will grant us grace to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in the love of his name. Lord God of Abraham, bless the children of your covenant, both Jew and Christian. Hasten the coming of your kingdom when the Gentiles shall be gathered in and all Israel shall be saved. And we shall dwell together in mutual love and peace under the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we, remaining in your love, showing that love to all your creatures and serving to comprehend the mystery of your love, may bear witness to that same love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all those who are sick, for those in darkness, in doubt and in despair, in loneliness and in fear, for prisoners, captives and refugees, for the victims of false accusations and violence, for all at the point of death and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the downhearted, the strength of those who suffer. Hear our prayers, and to every distressed soul grant mercy, relief, and refreshment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, our comfort in grief, our strength in affliction, let the cries of your church ring loud in your compassionate ears, that all may rejoice in your saving help and experience your constant love, made known to us in Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives forever. Amen.
the cross of Christ, the cross on which the Saviour of the world was hung. As you take a moment of quiet at home, perhaps before a cross or crucifix that you have in your own home, perhaps light a small candle or reverence the cross with a kiss as we sing our next hymn, Sing My Tongue, The Glorious Battle. Sing my tongue, the glorious battle. Sing the lance of the dread affray, o'er the cross the victor's trophy, sound the high triumphal lay. How the pains of death enduring, earth's redeemer won the day. When at length the appointed fullness of the sacred time was come, he was sent the world's creator from the Father's heavenly home, and was found in human fashion, offspring of the virgin's womb. Now the thirty days of which on earth he will to see, willingly he meets his passion, born to set his people free. On the cross the Lamb is lifted, there the sacrifice to be. There the nails and spear he suffers, vinegar and gall and reed. From his sacred body pierced, blood and water both proceed. Precious flood which all creation from the stain of sin hath freed. Faithful cross above all other, one and only noble tree, not 
in foliage, none in blossom, none in fruit I here may be. Sweet the wood and sweet the iron, and I hold more sweet is he. Bend the lofty tree thy branches, fly to rigid sinews bend, and the wild the stubborn harness which thy birth is so suspend, and the limbs of anti modern gently on thy arms extend. Thou alone was counted worthy, fish is world's ransom to sustain, that a shipwrecked race forever might a port of refuge gain, with the sacred blood anointed of the land for sinners slain. Praise and honor to the Father, praise and honor to the Son, praise and honor to the Spirit, ever free and ever one, one in might and one in glory, one eternal ages on. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. During communion, perhaps take a moment of quiet to receive Christ into your hearts using the prayer of spiritual communion. And during communion, the choir sings Ecce Quomodo Moritor by Jacob Handel.
Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.